Hey everyone, so anyone who follows me or the podcast will know that I'm a huge fan of JetBrains Rider. It's such an awesome, amazing .NET IDE. I used to use Visual Studio for many, many years and heavily embraced with Sharper, which is an extension also by JetBrains. But for quite a few years now, I've fully lived in Rider. It's got all the ReSharper goodness and it's just an awesome IDE too. And it's cross-platform. And whilst Rider is new-ish, I think six years old, it's actually much more mature than that as it's built on top of the IntelliJ platform, leveraging and sharing many, many years of common ID functionality and experience and shared plugins too. So it's very, very mature. And because of that common shared core ID, you can do much more than just .NET with it. I've got a project I work on which uses Angular for the front end. I still use Rider for that too. I also write PowerShell in it. You can do C Sharp, F Sharp, VB.NET, uh, C++, SQL, and more. So let's dive into Rider and I'll show you why I love it so much. So I'm going to show you the UI with some tips and tricks. Then we'll dig into how to leverage the ReSharper engine and keyboard shortcuts to make you a lot more productive. And we'll look into how to run unit tests and continuously run your tests as you code. Then lastly, we'll have a quick look at Git integration. Okay, let's do this. So this is Rider and it's an IDE. So if you're a developer and you're used to any form of IDE, you'd be used to the concept of a solution explorer. It's got various panes along the, the left, the bottom, the right hand side. We've got the run and debug stuff and choosing your configuration. So it's all pretty standard stuff. But one thing I really like about Rider is it's very, very keyboard shortcut driven. So for example, each of these, like the Solution Explorer is Alt 1. NuGet is Alt 7 if I cover, hover the mouse over. Alt 8 for unit tests. Alt 7 for unit, um, for NuGet. Alt 9 for Git. And by doing that, so if I do Alt 1, I can very quickly toggle. I think in Visual Studio it might have changed, if you do, I think it's Control Alt L, that gets up Solution Explorer, but you can't just toggle it away. You can't just press it and keep on toggling back and forward. Where this is just for all of the different ones you want. It's just really fast. Another shortcut I really love with this is, and I can't remember whether I set this myself. If I look in the settings, um, Control Alt S for settings, by the way, key map and search for resize. Then these ones for resizing windows, control, alt, shift and left and cursor keys and things. So that allows me to very quickly just resize. So if I get up um, NuGet or whatever panels, I can resize that. And it's so much faster than just having to find the mouse, find that edge where you can capture that and doing that. You can just very quickly move resize stuff around. It's very, very nice. There's, there's other ones like Control shift f12 just gets rid of all the pins temporarily and you can press it again to get them all back again. You've got whatever your last selected pin was, shift escape gets rid of it. Oh, okay, maybe not the last selected then, the last one I alt wand to or one, yes, that one. Yeah, so it's ever, whichever one you press the keyboard shortcut to get to. Shift escape seems to get rid of it. And then you can bring them all back by, yeah. So let's talk about some other keyboard shortcuts you can use all the time in Rider. If you used to be sharper, you're probably used to control T, which brings up search everything. You can do shift shift as well, which does the same. And it allows you to literally search everything. So you can search for files, you can search for symbols, you can search for settings, actions. So if I type weather forecast, I can very quickly go to there. If I, let's go for summary, if I close this down, if I did shift, shift, summary, I can very quickly find that property. If I search for a command like commit, I can do a commit. I can also see settings. And if, if there were toggle, you can get stuff in line as well. So you can change them without going to that settings dialogue. So you can see they've really thought about keyboard first, but 
As far as coding, because it's a code editor, let's look at some very useful commands that we can use for coding. One I use a lot is alt insert. So for example, if I'm in, let's go to a class, alt insert. So if I'm in a class, I'll alt insert, I can choose a constructor or insert a property. If I'm over here in the solution, I can do alt insert and choose create a new project. If I'm in a class, I can do alt insert, create a new directory or file. So alt insert changes a lot depending on your context. So let's actually create a new directory, call it handlers. And then again, alt insert again, I'm going to create a class and call it my handle. So alt insert again, constructor. So I'm just alt inserting to, to actually create the initial things. If I do iLogger, for example, So as well as alt insert, another keyboard shortcut you can use a lot is alt enter. So, and again, this depends on context to what it does. Alt enter here, I can say, introduce a read only field logger. So that's created the backing field here and it's assigned it. If I now say I want to use this, let's go to shift shift weather forecast controller. So I want to inject my handler. Alt enter, again, introduce read on field, and then I can start using it. And say I call a method called execute, which doesn't exist. Again, alt enter, create method. So that's created it for me. Now I've realized I've made a mistake. I wanted to actually use an interface here. So let's do I, my handler, alt enter. So again, I'll tend to all the time, create interface. I want this to be in its own file. I'll tend to move to its own file. Then go over to weather forecast controller. I actually want to be using the interface instead. I, but I've got this error, this red squigglies. I'll tend to change type of field to the interface. So very quickly, allowing alt enter to just fix things for me so our interface hasn't actually got the execute so another very good shortcut here is Control shift r does refactor this so again it depends on context to where you are so i'm here i can do Control shift r i can change the signature which actually gives me a drop down so a pop-up which allows me to change parameters and various things which is very powerful if you if you're changing a signature that's used throughout a large code base you can this can do a lot of the work for you but that control shift r you've also got pull methods up which is going to pull methods up into the interface or the base class or whatever um its parent in the hierarchy is so execute that's fine and now that's pulled it if i f12 on the i my handler it's pulled it up so if I go back to the weather forecast controller, that's fixed the compiler. So you can see how I'm really leveraging alt insert, alt enter, and just the ID is doing a lot of just the grunt work for me. So one thing you might notice on the right hand side, we've got a bunch of yellow here. Now I always try for to make sure I've got good code quality to make sure that's green. So you can see there's a few things here that are grayed out, but I can do alt page up and page down to jump between them. So this is saying log is not being used. Okay, let's use it. I could delete it or I can use it. It's a demo, I don't really mind what it says. And we've got some more, so alt page up. And it's saying that all these using direct directives aren't being used. Alt enter. I can remove using directings in the file. I can press right and say, fix this up in the entire folder, project or solution. Other things like here, we can see that new, it's grayed out slightly. So I'll tend to again. So again, this is like by far the most common keyboard shortcut you can be using all the time in Rider. And it's saying it can use a, an array initializer. So it simplifies your code. And with a lot of the new C-sharp language features, Rider's how I learn about them because it makes recommendations and suggestions 
And now we can see that we've got green at the top. No problems found. So let's have a look at some tests now. We want to look how tests work. So again, going over to, I mentioned before, if we're on the solution, if we do Alt Insert, then you can create a new project. So I'm going to create an XUnit project, call it RiderDemo.Tests. And this is going to use Web Application Factory, which is the ASP.NET way of doing integration tests against Web API. So I'm just going to say var web, app, web application factory equals new web application factory. Now I've not got the new, new get package that does this. So again, I'll enter. I can say find this type on newget.org. It's found it. This, this is the one I want. I can add it. And that's now installed the NuGet package. So it's still, it's still red. I'll tend to again, import missing references. So it's just adding the using. I also need to add a reference from my test project to the main project. So I'll do that here. And then, so then I can do program, which is how you do web application factory. And then I can say web application factory dot create client, which is going to create an HTTP client. Again, alt enter introduce variable and it's giving me a name. So that's fine. I'll take that. I then want to say HTTP client, a get request to what do we call it? Weather forecast. So this is an async method. So if I say await, we've got red squigglies again, have a guess. I'll enter and it's going to, so before, Currently it's public void, hitting enter after alt enter on this one. It's now async task, so that now compiles. Alt enter again, introduce variable, tab, I don't like that, I'm just gonna call it response. Enter response dot. So now I want to assert this. I quite like a NuGet package called fluent assertion, so alt F7 for NuGet packages. And I'm going to type fluent, fluent assertions. I'm going to click add this one. And then I should be able to do status code should. So fluent assertions does this should be, it's just a nice clean syntax. Oh, HTTP, oh, HTTP status code. Okay. And even little things like there. My cursor was here, but I pressed semicolon and it, it knew to put it at the end, not in front of the brace or the parenthesis. So we now want to run this. So I'm going to bring the cursor up to here. You can see where this, I can click here and say run debug or have a guess what shortcut I'm going to press now. Alt enter and I can run it from here. And then our test has failed. So I can probably guess what this is. It's probably because we're injecting my handler, but not registering it. So if we go up to here and just register this, um, our transient, I, my handler, my handler. And again, we've got some warnings. So here I can do alt enter. And this time I'm going to do it across the entire solution just to clean up. So that would have removed all of them across the entire solution and tidied things up a bit and close that. If I run this again, now we've got a pass. So if you've got lots of tests running, you might want to run the test continuously. So there's this button here and you can say cover new and outdated tests because I've not done coverage before. I just run them. I'm just going to click yes. It's going to ask if it wants to start off by doing them all. So it's covering my entire project. It gives me code coverage. It also gives me these gutter items here. So this tells me whether if it's green, it means that this code is passing. So obviously this is in the test, but it would also do the same in your like code as well. And in the controller, if it's white, it means that the code you're looking at isn't being covered at all by tests. If it's red, it's covered by a failing test. So for example, if I go to the controller and then let's say, Let's change this to I action results and let's return bad request. 
and then run the test again. So control U U. Oh, it did it automatically anyway. I was going to say control U U will run your last test executions for the same test again, but I'd forgotten I'd turned on continuous running. So it did it for me anyway. And you can see it failed straight away. And you can see that the test said. So like, literally as I was coding, um, it came up and run my test for me and failed. And it said that it was um, 200, but it actually got 400. So let's just fix that. Obviously that's not doing what it should be doing. We'd have more extensive tests, but that's run it straight away. We've got the green. Uh, if I, in fact, I didn't show you if I do that again, then we've got red in the gutter as well. If we've got code that's not covered at all, so if I say um, public for blah, uh, console, console dot right line, whatever, then you can see that's gone white. Let's fix, let's fix this up. To be okay now because I've changed the return type. And then hopefully this should run and pass. Yes, but we've still got white here. So the last thing I want to show is Git integration. So hands up, I actually don't use Rider that heavily for Git. I either use the command line or I use a GUI called Smart Git. But whilst I'm here, I'll show you what I know. So again, Alt 9 gets up Git. So you can click on, you can see your branches on the left. You can click on your commits. You can see the information about the commit. So I can see what was changed. And I can double click on one and it'll go to it. I've only got an initial commit, so it's not showing me a diff. You can do control alt K and that gets you your commit thing. So you can do a commit message. Rider adds this thing called change lists. So it's very similar to like per forces, chain sets, I think they call them. But it adds on top of Git, so it's just basically, if you've got lots of pending changes, you can break them up into different change lists. There's also a nice keyboard shortcut, um, control shift back tick, I think it is. Yes. So this pops up all your branches. So I've only got one at the moment, but imagine you've got a whole bunch of branches. You can very quickly swap between them and you can create a new branch from a particular branch. So that's quite nice too. So hopefully that was a useful introduction to JetBrains Rider. If you like the video, please click like and subscribe and let other people know about the, the channel and see you next time.